Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to take a look at the New York Times hard Sudoku uh, published today. Uh, the New York Times puzzle actually is quite a high quality puzzle in my experience. It's probably, um, I think it's it's less difficult than a diabolical from the Daily Telegraph, but more difficult than a super fiendish from the Times. So it sits somewhere between the two. And um, Anyway, let, without further ado, let's have a look at this one. So you can see we can place a one here straight away because we have a one here, a one here, and a one here. Let's fill that in. And I'm going to be using uh, pencil marks as usual. So in any 3x3 three three block where a number can only go in exactly two positions, I'll make little pencil marks to indicate that. So we can, you can see we can do the same thing up there, look. Uh, we can do the same thing with some nines down here. Um, and as always with a Sudoku, the first stages of the solve are a bit repetitive. Um, what you have to sort of train your brain to do is to almost forget the last puzzle you solved and just remember this one. You're trying to remember the information that's coming out of this puzzle only and forget about everything that went before, which actually in a competitive setting, if you're speed solving Sudoku in a tournament environment, it's quite difficult to do. Um, I'm not exactly sure it's good for the brain actually to have to sort of forget what it's just learnt um, and start again over and over again but that is obviously what's required so, so we're making slow progress here I'm probably missing something because I'm speaking at the same time as trying to solve which is never terribly efficient let's see we can place ones here look um, da -da 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 -da. Where is the next number? Threes, fours, fives. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so we can place fives here with pencil marks, and fives up here, therefore, with pencil marks. And then something interesting happens. Let's look at the effect of this 5 on the grid. So this 5 is, is it's meaning we can't place a 5 in either of these two positions. And therefore the 5s in this 3x3 three three non-et are going to be either here, here or here. Now I'm not allowed to pencil mark this under my notation method because that's obviously, there's obviously three positions a 5 could go, not two. But I'm putting them in there just to illustrate something which is that if we compare the fives here with these two fives, i.e. the only place the five can go in this non-et, you can see that we have um, a pattern because the fives are appearing in the same rows, rows one and rows three. So for example, if this turns out to be the real five, then there will be a five here. And if this turns out to be the real five, then the five will be in either of these two positions. Now that means that there can't be any more fives uh, in the top third of the grid in rows one and three. In particular, we can't have a five here, and we can't have a five in these two positions either, because if we did, then we're going to be forcing two fives into either rows one or rows three. So let's take a look at this three by three non-et now. So we know that this can't be a five. I'll show you why not. Look, if I put the five here, look, there's now going to have to be a five here and this have to be a 5 in one of these two positions too, so that, that's clearly impossible. So there definitely isn't a 5 here, we can remove this pencil mark 5, this cell here has to be a 5. I would just quickly check column 1 now, so you can see I'm looking for 2, 3, 4 and 6, so that cell can only be two numbers, but I'm not seeing anything clever there. Hmm. And in fact, I've just noticed something. Now this this happens over and over again in these New York Times Sudokus. I'm convinced it's sort of their pet technique that you have to use and it's an interesting one because this method of notation which I eulogize about and I think it is the most efficient way of, um, of solving Sudoku quickly. It doesn't work what I'm about to show you here. This is, this is if you like, the only standard 
technique that it really fails on. It does. It's not great for X-wings, it's not great for swordfishes, but it really does fail where you have this arrangement. Let's have a look at the central nonet. And if you study it, you, you might notice something clever, um, especially if you combine it with what's going on here in column 6. So you can see we've got three numbers here. And in these are empty, but in column 6 we have the four numbers 4, 9 and 2, none of which are appearing yet in this central nonet. So we know that the numbers 9, 4 and 2 have got to fill um, these cells here. They can't go anywhere else. Therefore these three cells have to be the missing numbers. They have to be 1, 3 and 7. Uh, I'm doing this longhand just so that it absolutely illustrates the point. Obviously I'm going to be able to eliminate some of these numbers because of the cross-checking, but it's just to show you. Now, it's very hard, I think, to spot this if you just rely purely on the notation um, that I recommend. You just have to, you have to get a bit used to the fact that this might be thrown at you from time to time, and if it is, try it, just try and see it. Now, we can use the fact that we have a 9 here to eliminate this one. Um, 2, 4, the 1, 3, 7 might be useful because effectively now we have 6 numbers. Um, let's just uh, tidy this up slightly. Uh, this can't be a 1. Uh, 6 numbers now in column 6. You can see the missing numbers are 5, 6 and 8. And we have a 5 here. So that's going to have to be a 6 or an 8 here. Ah, and there's a 6 and an 8 in row 1. So in fact this cell here can only be a 5, which is, that's a bit, it's tricky, tricky, not easy to spot that. So well done if you saw it quicker than I did. Um, and now you can now see, I suspect this is going to be the trick to, uh, to actually solving the puzzle. We now have a 5 and a 5 here, so this cell is going to have to be a 5. Let's fill that in. And that's going to, you can see immediately, this is the useful thing about our pencil marks. We know there's a 5 in one of these two positions, and we know it can't be here anymore because of this 5. So it's going to have to be here, and the moment I place this 5, I can immediately place the 6, because uh, the 6 has to go in one of those two positions, and once this position is taken, it has to move, move down. So... Now, can we use the 6? Yes, we can. So this is now a 6 over here. Again, straightforward Sudoku rules to find that 6. Um, now, what else can we see? 1, 2, 3, 4 along here. Ah, yes, OK. So now we can pencil mark 1s here and here. Look, now, this can't be a 1. So this is the only one of these three now that can be a 1. So let's fill that in. This can't be a 5, I could have eliminated that earlier. Um, so you can see 2, 3, 4 into these positions. And we have a 2 here, but we can't actually use that fact because we can't quite eliminate further. Um, so this cell and this cell, just reminding myself, are 6 and 8 in some order. Seven, 7. Eight. Ah, now this eight nine here. Let's look at the effect of that on this nonet. You can see they're going to have to appear in these two cells here. It's the only places left for them. So we can pencil mark the eight nines there. That means that these two cells have got to be four and seven, the missing numbers. Uh, and that's seven in the top row now. It means this can't be a seven. That means the seven is going to have to go there, so let's fill that in. Um, and there's going to be a seven in one of these three positions, but we actually have a seven in one there, so we can pencil mark sevens into those two positions there as well. Now we can see that threes have to be, in fact, the threes are now resolved because we have this three here and this three here, so that's going to this cell is going to have to be a three, and that cell can therefore be immediately placed to be a one. And we can pencil mark threes here now and pencil mark ones there. And this one here also forces this to be a one. 
I'm doing this longhand because I think uh, occasionally it's, it's very instructive to just step through one of these puzzles using the method we recommend. You can see now this, this cell here has to be a 6 by simple Sudoku rules. This cell has to be a 6 and this cell has to be a 6. Ha! And as usual with the New York Times, when you complete all of one number they change the font which I find a bit disconcerting but there we are. And you see we can pencil mark twos into these two cells. And what are we missing down here? Twos into those two cells, look. In fact, these two cells here have to be three and four in some order. Let's put those in. Four. Now, we've got an interesting arrangement of threes there. You can see these two threes and these two threes. It's the same... Uh, principle that we talked about earlier. There can't now be any more threes in rows five and six. So in particular, we can't have threes here, we can't have threes here, otherwise we'll get a problem. So the threes are going to have to be up there. So this must be 2828, wasn't it? Fours into those two positions there, look. Ah, now this must be an eight, simply to complete the row. And that must be useful, surely. Um, let's mark eights there. Oh, we can do a little trick. Now, Let's have a look at this. This is a we're going to use uniqueness now to make a bit of more progress. So let's take a look at the arrangement of eights here. You can see we've got eight and a nine in these two squares. We've got eights in the same row here in this nonet, and we haven't yet placed a nine in this nonet. Now, because of uniqueness, we know that if there is a nine in either of these positions. In the final solution, so if we opened the paper and looked at the solution to this puzzle and there was a 9 in either of these cells, then the other cell would have to take an 8. Uh, so let's just show you what I mean. Let's say this was a 9, just arbitrarily. This would have to be an 8, therefore this would have to be an 8, and this would have to be a 9. So we'd look at the final solution, it would contain this pattern. Well, this is not valid. Uh, this and what do I mean by not valid? Well, what I mean is that this puzzle now has effectively two solutions because there is no way of disambiguating, if you like, between the positions of these eight and nines. Uh, if we reverse them, so if this is an oops, I need to do that. If this is an eight and this is a nine, and this is a nine and this is an eight, it's exactly the same puzzle, just with the eights and nines transposed in these two positions. So this cannot be the final solution. It cannot include this pattern of eight and nines because if it did, it would not be a unique puzzle. So we can remove, let's remove the eight and the nines there. So I know there is not a nine in either of these positions because I know this is a good Sudoku published in a proper quality paper. Uh, it has one solution, therefore there is not a nine in either of these cells. So the nine must be, oopsie, sorry, I've to change the thing to pencil marks. The 9 is in one of those two positions. Um, and that allows us to eliminate this 9 here, um, which gives us a 2 4 pair here, look, and therefore this cell here must take a 9. Let's fill that in. 9, 9. You can see there's a 9 in one of these two cells now, but there can't be, can't be this one because we already have a 9 in the column. So the 9 will have to be here. And we can pencil mark some 9s over there. We're not far now, I think, from a solution. Four, three, four, seven, eight, nine. You can see we can pencil mark eights now into these two positions. And let's see the effect of that here. That's going to force an eight into this cell, which in turn does a couple of things. It allows us to pencil mark some eights down here which gives us a 5-8 pair there, look, but it also allows us to place a 2 into this cell, um, which 
we're now just going to have to keep track of the pencil marks we're getting so we're getting a lot of information as this puzzle finishes uh, so this 5-9 pair now means that we can eliminate this 9 this has to be a 9 like that that means this is the 9 over here you can see just by having a structured approach I mean we, we only had to do one one clever trick if you like which was um, spotting this this triple in this central non-edge and apart from that our pencil marks have taken us through very nicely to this point um, I suppose the uniqueness point was also a nice one but it was quite doable uh, so now we can place threes look into those two cells we're very much now in the final stages I'd suggest of the solve we just have to have one more bit of inspiration this is one of the frustrating things about doing these puzzles live is that um, sometimes you can miss the bleeding obvious as uh, Basil Fawlty might have said this two here we can unwind the two over there look Let's do that That's four that gives us four in one of those two positions uh, two, two, two. Where's the final step so four seven eight to place here ah so the only place an eight can now go in column nine is here let's put that in we need this pencil mark here sevens down there and then we can interact the eights here with this eight here that forces an eight down there look and that's going to finish the puzzle i'm sure eight three Three. Let's remove the three from there. Um, five, five, one, one, two. I suppose it is quite cathartic when the uh, all of the um, fonts keep changing. <laughs> um, okay, I think that has to be a four. That has to be a three. That must therefore be a seven. Seven, eight, three, nine, nine, eight. Uh, although at this point it all looks a bit like gibberish, so that must be a seven, seven, four, seven, four, four, three, three, and seven. There we go. So I hope this was useful, a quick run through, um, a couple of interesting techniques and some thoughts on um, the restrictions I suppose of the pencil mark method we recommend. Um, if you enjoy the channel please do subscribe, we'll be back again soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Thanks for watching.